Welcome to Worship with McClure United Church. I'm so glad that you've chosen to spend this time caring for your spirit. I hope that what you experience here will be a gift to you as you journey as a disciple of Jesus. McClure United Church is a church of mission and of welcome, and we are privileged to live out this ministry on Treaty 6 land and the traditional homeland of the Métis. It has been difficult for us not to be in our building. And I just wanted to assure folks that the Building Access Task Group continues to monitor public health measures as well as vaccine progress and overall caseloads. And although the province permits up to 30 people at a worship service, the task group, together with the board and the staff, do not feel that in-person worship would be good ministry for McClure right, right now. However, worship, Bible study, congregational meetings, men's and women's gatherings, outreach projects, and more continue to happen online. So please check out our website or our Facebook page for updates. The exciting news is that there is light at the end of this here tunnel. Um, one of the signs of that light is that at Amy McClure House a couple of weekends ago, they received their first dose of the vaccine. If you have any questions about building use, or if you are in need of uh, ministry support, please call the church office. Leave a message and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. One of the really nifty outreach projects that is going on right now is a focus on supporting our refugee family and families that we are yet to, to sponsor who haven't been able to get here yet. So the outreach committee invites you to say goodbye to 2020. They are collecting donations to support ongoing and upcoming refugee support. For every $20 received during the month of February, a heart will be planted in the snowbank in front of the church. So please consider a donation to our refugee support by cash, check, or e-transfer. Let's make a really big garden of hearts. A group of wonderful women uh, meet once a month at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning for conversation and connection. And you are welcome to join via Zoom. Send a note to Laura if you'd like to join in as she's taking on leadership of this group while I'm away. Next gathering is February the 13th. Leave on your pajamas or get dressed up, put to yourself, pour yourself a cup of coffee and turn on your computer, tablet and click on the Zoom link and connect with amazing women of the church. As I mentioned, I will be leaving on sabbatical here pretty quick. February 1st is my first day of sabbatical, and I will return July the 19th. I'll be attending a preaching conference and taking a class through the Atlantic School of Theology. I'll be doing this, of course, all online. I'll also be doing some spiritual reflection with my director, as well as some professional reading. I will miss you terribly, uh, but I know this will be a good time of refreshment and renewal for both of us. So God's blessing be with you while we are apart. And please do your best to support Laura and others who are covering my work while I'm gone. February the 7th, Laura is putting together a little something special for worship. We need, we need to remind ourselves and others that we continue to be the church even with access, without access to the building. She's looking for people willing to contribute to this service, specifically people who are willing to make a video of themselves talking about how they have appreciated McClure Church during this pandemic. Perhaps you've enjoyed worship or a study group or one of the outreach projects. Maybe you've enjoyed the congregational check-ins, the phoning tree, or a pastoral phone call. If you are willing, 
please let Laura know that you would like to participate in this special project for worship. On February the 7th, we are holding a special congregational meeting for all members and adherents of McClure United Church. All are invited to participate in this congregational meeting, the primary purpose of which is to consider the 21, the 2021 operating and capital budgets. The meeting will be called to order at 11 a.m. and will be convened using Zoom computer conferencing platforms. For more information, go again to our website and check that out. It would be good to have as many people as possible there to, to celebrate what we have accomplished and to know what exciting things we have planned for the future as reflected in our budgets. Please also take note that a Zoom Bible study is going to start soon, beginning February the 3rd and happening every Wednesday at 1 p.m. To register, again, visit our website for more information. We are also inviting folks to participate in worship leadership by offering their skills in reading. And so if you're interested in reading scripture for our Sunday morning services, we're looking for a variety of people of different ages to share in this ministry with us. Again, contact Laura if you would like to participate in that. And a good way to contact her is through the church office phone. So call the office, leave a message, and Laura will be in contact with you. That's the announcements for this particular time. I invite you now to take a deep breath and prepare your hearts for worship. Worship is a time when we hear God's call and all that God is calling us to be. Worship is a time when we recognize God's grace, abundant and overflowing. Worship is a time of revelation, a time when we see things for the first time or in a new light. Let us open our lives to receive God's call, recognize God's grace, and see God's light. Let us pray. God, even if we were able to speak in every language in the world, even if we were fluent in languages of angels, without love, we are just a self-important noise. God of love, we look to you for healing. Even if we have the gift of prophecy and can probe the deepest mysteries of life, even if we know everything there is to know, even if we have the faith to move mountains. Without love, we are nothing. God of love, we look to you for meaning. Even if we give everything we have to help others, without love, all these sacrifices do us little good. God of love, we look to you for transformation. Let your love be our compass, our treasure, our guiding light. For love has the staying power to endure everything that comes. Love keeps hoping when there is nothing left to hope for. Love never fails. Amen. sinking of the days 
space between the phrases in the cracks between the stars in the gaps between the meaning you were there in the melting down of endings in the cooling of the sun in the solstice of Scripture comes to us from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Let us listen together to these words. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off, like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the, the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May God bless to our understanding and our living this reading from the Word. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts reflect your wisdom and give us strength for the living of our days, O God. Amen. Well, friends, how are you doing? I must admit, I'm feeling rather tired. This past week, as I prepared to disconnect for a time of sabbatical, starting on Monday, the list of things to do has been long. 
Though completing each task and meeting each deadline has felt good, I'm feeling rather weary. And of course, there is another component to my weariness. That is the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm tired. I miss seeing you and hugging you and sharing food with you and all the other things we used to enjoy doing together before this plague began. I'm tired of worrying about the ones that are sick, the ones who are very alone, the ones that are grieving, the ones that are on the front lines and the ones that are not staying connected to friends because they don't have the technology or the ability with technology to do so. And I worry about the ones who are struggling with mental health. I was so glad this past week that there were opportunities for us to talk about our mental health and that the media also was supporting us to do so. I'm tired of preaching to a camera and trying to worship myself in my office or in my living room. I'm tired of being nervous every time I head out the door and I'm tired of waiting and hoping and longing to be able to make plans again. I wonder if you are tired too. There's a technical term for what we are all feeling and it's called COVID fatigue. It's nice to know that my tired does not come from a lack of character in me, but rather as a result of the circumstances we are all currently living in. But still, I'm tired. Must admit, I was less tired a couple of Sundays ago when I headed over to Amy McClure House to see the residents there receive their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. The energy and hope with which they rolled up their sleeves was inspiring and their joy lifted the weight of this pandemic for a moment. But this week, with the news of a suspension of the arrival of more vaccine and the slowdown of the number of doses being delivered, well, that has been hard to hear. Dr. Tam, Canada's chief public health officer, has offered many reassuring words in the midst of all of this difficult news. She assures us that this is just a blip on the screen, that the vaccines will be rolling out again soon and that the delays are temporary. One of the things that Dr. Tam says that lightens my heart is, this pandemic will come to an end. I need to hear those words. She is hopeful for this year ahead. Friends, into my tired this week came this beautiful passage from Isaiah that our friend Reverend Bill Shank read for us. Read for us all the way from Vancouver Island where he and his partner Carol are now living. This passage is written to a people who have been in exile in Babylon. Toward the end of nearly 60 years in exile, there is suddenly a hope that Cyrus, will allow the captives return, to return to their original homelands. This was nothing less than a miracle from God to those who have been struggling, lost and alone. And even as the people received this good news, it became clear that the people had doubts and concerns. It would take a great deal of energy to make that journey home again. And they worried about what they would find when they got there. What new challenges would they face? Undoubtedly, things would just, wouldn't just be the way they once were. The words we find in, his, in Isaiah 40 echo what the people of the time were feeling. We hear the people's doubt and their wonder whether God is still with them. And if God is there, they wonder if God has anything planned for them. Their worry and concern, their tiredness, mirrors our own. Isaiah asked the tired and the doubting exiles. I ask you also, have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the youth will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Friends, if you are tired right now, you're certainly not alone. COVID fatigue is a thing. And I invite you to be gentle with yourself. Take a nap. Take a walk. Breathe deeply. Eat that second cookie. Or pour yourself a bubble bath. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And then let the words of Isaiah soak into your bones. As Christians, we know the ultimate source of our strength, our hope, and our power to endure is the God power who renews our strength and lifts us up with wings like eagles. I invite you to think about how the God power has been renewing your strength and who has been lifting you up. Perhaps it's the grocery store clerk who scans your apples and canned soup and manages smiles at the corner of her eyes when she looks at you. Perhaps the one lifting you up is a child who has a very hard time sitting in still in front of the computer screen, but whose face completely lights up when they notice you. Perhaps it's the neighbor whose name you don't know, but who is shoveling your sidewalk after every dump of snow. Or perhaps it's the one who sends you silly Facebook posts of a kitten sitting in boxes or silly quotes in the hopes it will make you giggle and brighten your day. Perhaps it might also be wise for us in this time of worship to think about how we, in our weariness, renew the strength of others and are the God power how we lift up others with wings like eagles. Perhaps we've taken a moment and penned a word of love and support and sent it on to someone who needs to hear from us. Perhaps we've made yet another phone call alongside a thousand other calls because we know another call will ease the anxiety of the one who answers hello. Perhaps we are the one who checks with our neighbor to see if there's anything we might bring them from the grocery store. Perhaps we have been the one standing outside the nursing home window or care home window in the cold, waving at a grandparent and holding up, we love you signs. We are all tired, but we are going to get through this. For have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. May that be so. Amen.
and I will raise you up on eagles' wings. Bear you on the breath of John, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of my hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of my hand. For to God's angels is given a command to guard you against the stone and I will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the balm of my hand and hold Now let us join together in prayer. Loving God, to whom we give thanks for all of life's blessings, we come to you now in a time of difficulty and distress. We belong in community, yet we find ourselves cut off from it. We long for the presence of others, for gatherings that encourage and inspire us. We long for the opportunities to grieve our losses with others who support us in our grief. We feel so alone. Did we not know? Had we not heard? The prophet's words remind us that we are not alone, that those who wait for the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagles, shall run and not be weary, shall walk and not faint. So remind us, O oh God, that in the darkness of our solitude, the light still comes through. That as the hymn writer says, in the crater carved by sadness, you are there. Guide us through the, the maze of technological connection that we might experience new forms of community Help us to experience new blessings from solitude. So may we receive your gift of renewed strength, assurance that in the spite of difficulty, we do not walk alone. Today we pray for our communities and society as a whole. Grant us cheerfulness and compassion as we care for one another in times of crisis and routine. We give you thanks for those involved in health care, for frontline workers, and for ordinary folk who faithfully carry on so that we might accomplish what is needed for daily living. We pray for our congregation and ask your blessing on all of its leaders. We especially pray for Deborah as she goes on a period of sabbatical that it may bring to her and through her to all of us renewal of faith and energy as we continue on our journey. And we pray for Laura and all of the staff and support people of this congregation as we carry on together. Through times of joy and natural blessings, through times of pain and difficulty, 
we have learned to trust that you are there, O God. Remembering now the love you have shown to us in Jesus Christ, we further pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let us continue the journey walking in love. Let us care for each other and care for the earth. Let us seek justice and make peace. God goes before us. So let us live our lives boldly. And may the grace of Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion and comfort of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and every day. Amen. Amen.